So uh, we do have some time constraints, um, and so we do want to get moving, and so we're just going to go ahead and get started today. Uh, just a couple of reminders. There is this channel on Blue Jeans, and then there's also live translation on the uh, separate Blue Jeans connection that you can see on the screen right there. We'll leave that up for a minute in case you need to note that number. Um, and that's uh, Nicole uh, doing some live translation as we go through this presentation. Uh, some other uh, quick announcements if you go to the next slide. As just that these, uh, I already mentioned the translation that's going on. Uh, there are some physical awards associated with uh, some of what we'll talk about today. Uh, there's even some monetary um, uh, elements that uh, go with some of these awards, and so that will be taken care of uh, in some paychecks coming out uh, soon. Uh, and then, of course, all of these presentations will be posted uh, both in English. Um, this presentation will be posted, and then the re recordings will be available as well. Any questions, you can try some of those questions. If it's HR-related, there's a nice or HR um, email address you can you can direct <laughs> questions to, but of course you can direct questions to the private office as well. Uh, so with that um, and some basic announcements, uh, we'll also be monitoring chat channels on both Blue Jeans, and so that's a good way to get questions in um, and any comments as, as we go. So I'll pause for just a moment to make sure if there's any um, questions immediately, any issues with hearing us. There is an issue yeah. that some people are reporting that they can't see the slides. One person reports they're black. I'm on blue jeans and I see the slides. I am on blue jeans and I see the slides too. So also in the UK. But I guess that there's, it's not a general problem. Yeah, it's only two people referencing it and they are slightly different. I'm not sure that they're the same issue. Okay. Uh, all right, well, I apologize to those people that um, are having those, is those, those issues and we'll uh, try to get uh, some help through chat and um, Stay tuned as we get through, but we will just have to continue. All right, um, so at this point, we would if we go to the next slide, um, introduce um, the president of Oramat Mountain. Unfortunately, he had um, a conflict suddenly come up and so was not able to join us, but he did send a message and that we'll play for you uh, right now. Hello. It's very and quiet. Sorry once again not to be there in person. That's just the way our world is at the moment. Maybe next year we can do this in person. So, welcome to the Aura Ward. And as I've done in the past, let's do a quick tour of Aura and see what's going on across the organization we all work for. Here is Aura spread across the planet um, on all our continents, all our facilities, where at least 1,600 of us all work. So let's start in Arizona and on Kitt Peak. Of course, the disaster of the Contreras fire that, of course, halted all operations, but mercifully could have done far more damage than it actually did. And congratulations to the Noalab team and the CAS team for coping with this situation and now putting us on the road to recovery. Let's move on to Chile, where again, uh, News was not great either. The winter storms came in and took out. You saw that nice view of Rubin all the way through to Gemini. All our observatories, of course, were ground to a halt with the winter storms. And thank you for this wonderful helicopter footage of the winter storm. However, despite COVID and the storms, our team on Rubin were able to carry on the construction, get the telescope ready. And now we're expecting to move into early operations in mid-2024. The whole new great observatory that we've been creating that Pat and the team from all three parts of NOAO, Gemini, and the Rubin Observatory all brought together into this new, the US's and the National Science Foundation's very first national laboratory for optical and infrared science. 
The proposal went in, and in fact, a few weeks ago, the National Board discussed the proposal, and the first feedback we have is that so far, we're in for some very good news. So congratulations to the entire team. Also, it's become increasingly important is sustainability across all our programs. This started with solar cells being put on Gemini. We're now moving to the south. And all of our centers are now stepping up and looking at what sustainability means. <laughs> and here are the people who are going to be doing it for Noir Lab, for NSO, and for the Space Telescope Science Institute. Let's move now to Hawaii and to the Daniel K. Inoue Solar Telescope, which has now gone into full science operations, this amazing facility which in fact we are pointing a four meter telescope directly at the sun this incredible off-axis design that the team has been building over the years you can see the telescope moving here the big mirror cell which looks at the sun and then directs the light down into this amazing coup de light which is a rotating clean room the inauguration of this great telescope the world's largest solar telescope will happen at the end of august this year in Maui. Congratulations to the entire DKIS team. So from Maui, let's move across to Baltimore, Maryland, and back to Christmas Day last year. Thumbs up from Jean Luc Voyer. All systems are go. We're inside a minute now. T minus 50 seconds and count. Oh, the uh, uh, yeah. several times, it brings a range of emotions. I started this project myself uh, in 2003. And then followed some six months of intense and very tense commissioning, where the entire NASA space telescope industry team worked away to get the telescope working. And this is what they released on the 11th of July this year. Vice President and President actually released this image, and the next day, the rest of the first science images from James Webb were also released. And there's just a small selection, which many of you will have seen in the press. So once again, congratulations to the entire NASA industry and institute team for this remarkable achievement. So let's visit another event that actually occurred um, last October, since I probably last spoke to you. This was the actual publication of the decadal survey. Every 10 years, the National Academy put together a panel 
of the great and the good in our field to actually study what should be priorities for the next decade. And late in October, Astronomy and Astrophysics for the 2020s was published. We call it Astro 2020. And it has always been the blueprint for what Aura has done. If you look across the last 40 years, each decadal survey has led to a facility that Aura has had the privilege to design, build, and bring into science operations. And 2020 proved no different. First, it expanded the value and importance of the US federal government engaging with both the US led 20 meter and 30 meter telescopes, which we call the extreme US Extremely Large Telescope Program. And in addition, it called for a large new optical UV telescope beyond the James Webb, beyond the W first mission, a telescope that ultimately will be capable for searching for life. And Aura and all of you have been part of this process for the last 40 years. You have created this future. So Aura, because of all of you, have a fascinating, exciting, and productive decades ahead. And of course, we've had incredible public success as well as just science success. What a run Aura facilities have had. So as we look forward to what comes next, perhaps we could do it again. Thank you all. You will have all enabled the next decades of astronomical discoveries through the world-class facilities. You have helped design, build, and run, and generate incredible science for the community. Thank you. That was some really fun stuff, um, and too bad that uh, we couldn't have Matt with us in person, uh, but we thank him for uh, the, that introductory uh, set of slides in the video. So let's move on to uh, introducing Linda Deck, uh, who is the head of uh, HR for Aura, and I uh, want to welcome her and thank you for participating, give you the floor for a moment. Thank you, Victor. Um, I, I just wanted to, uh, and one, I want to thank um, everyone for the opportunity to be able to to speak to the Rubin team. Um, you know, I, you know, I, I watch what Matt puts up, and um, and so the world sees our achievements, but I don't think they understand um, the work and dedication um, of our staff to um, make these things happen. And in some regards, you know, um, HR, though it doesn't feel like we are on the sidelines, but we are, um, you know, we are in support of of everyone in helping. Um, achieve these goals, but we do recognize and appreciate all the efforts and do understand what it takes um, to uh, accomplish these goals. And, um, and we know over the last year, we have continued to face many, many challenges. You know, um, we continue to struggle with the pandemic and in the U.S., vaccination requirements and um, and testing, and for some people, um, having to quarantine, and um, we've had storms. We've had changes in processes and expectations on the administrative um, side. So I do recognize all of your efforts in the face of all of these challenges, and um, the entire HR team is, is really impressed and is extremely proud to partner with the Rubin team. I especially want to call out Amy Davidson because she has been um, a constant support for the Rubin team, and I, um, I'm very proud of the work she has done as well in support of all of you. Um, so I wanted to throw Amy in, um, in recognition as well as all of you. And uh, we will continue to support you and look for ways to improve our service um, to make your jobs easier. And I really look forward to see what um, we accomplish together as a team um, in the next year. So thank you, Victor, for the opportunity. And thank you, Ruben um, staff, for all the work and accomplishments that you have made. Awesome. 
Thank you, Linda. Thank you uh, to your team. And I second your uh, thanks to Amy Davidson for all the help she gives us. Um, it is uh, really appreciated and uh, often unnoticed uh, just how much she puts into our team. And uh, my, my, my special thanks to that for her efforts. So um, if we go to the next slide, I wanted to also introduce and uh, give Jelko a moment to uh, maybe say a few words. And while he's talking, we're going to do a little IT switch here on you. So you might see some things happening. But Jelko, I uh, wanted to give you the floor for a moment. Hello, Ruben team. I was hoping to be in Tucson with Victor, but Leanne and Eli organized another meeting in Slack. So we were double booked. I congratulate all our overdies. It was hard to select this year who to award because everyone is working so hard, everyone is so dedicated now that we are coming to the last phase of our construction. But those who got awards this year, they did this extra step, they were this little bit more passionate about what they do every day that they were chosen for awards. One of the awardees is actually next to me, our Aura Science awardee for Rubin, Leanne Guy, who is a subsystem scientist for data management. So congratulate. Thank you. Congratulations. And unfortunately, Leanne and I will not be able to stay to the end of the ceremony. We have to go back to Leanne is leading workshop on calibration. But uh, congratulations. Okay, everyone how about if i call an audible and i'm going to switch sides and go right to her award and then you guys are free to stay as long as you can would you like to like to do that yeah also members of butler three team who got awards in that calibration calibration meeting so in the so interest of time, we're showing the award, and if you uh, had anything else you wanted to say, um, then you, this would be a good time. Otherwise... Lian has done many great things, but in particular, she did very hard work of pushing Rubin Euclid working group that I also participated in. I know how complicated and prolonged work that was, but in the end, we got this document that describes derived data products that will have a major impact, not just on Rubin science, but on synergies between Rubin and Euclid extending way beyond the boundaries of our mission. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, hugging in real time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Victor. Awesome. All right, thanks for that. Um, and uh, apologies to organizers uh, for the little switch there, but um, we are nothing if not flexible. Uh, so um, let me also just say that uh, working with this team uh, just continues to be an amazing experience. Uh, I think the level of dedication, the investment, the productivity, the excitement, and just the spirit um, is truly impressive uh, and is so motivational every day um, from, from the entire team. I can't thank you all enough for all those efforts um, and for making Ruben um, a success. So if I can figure out how to do this. So um, I think all the accomplishments and uh, the energy of the entire team uh, and the anticipation was in full display a couple weeks ago at the Ruben Observatory Project and Community Workshop. Um, I think uh, the PCW itself and that location has a particularly um, special significance uh, because it was at the 2010 PCW uh, at that location where we heard the decadal survey results um, that made uh, Rubin Observatory, then LSST, the number one ranking um, and the number one priority for ground-based astronomy for the next decade. Um, and at that time, this was our uh, team photo. And then a couple uh, weeks ago, this was our team photo. Um, and uh, it's just a great example of, of, the, of the level of excitement, the anticipation, and just the engagement uh, that we've had, not just 10 years ago when we were still a thought and an idea, 
to a couple of weeks ago when we're uh, getting really close uh, to having something similar to what Matt uh, produced for a launch. And uh, we're all certainly very excited to be able to do that. So many of you participated um, there in person. Some of you were remote. Um, and the session was just, uh, or the whole meeting was just full of many sessions that were both planned in advance and that were planned on site. Um, and this is just a representation of a lot of that, what that was going on. All of these session materials, uh, the plenary recordings are available. And I encourage you all to, uh, to reference that and go to those uh, to both uh, refresh what you heard when you were there in person or to go see what was discussed and what was presented. Uh, to get the, really the full uh, breadth and understanding of what was going on uh, for that week and as, as a representation of everything that's been, that's going on for the whole project. Uh, at this point, I would normally sort of summarize uh, the progress for the, for the, uh, for the project, uh, but we did that uh, at the PCW, so I'll point you to um, one of the first plenaries, the introductory plenaries, as a place to get a quick summary of, of the accomplishments this past year. It's always impossible to do it in any kind of a condensed amount of time because there's just so much activity going on and so many things that have been accomplished in, uh, in any period of time. But it was uh, an attempt to recognize all the work that, was, um, that has been progressing, uh, particularly over the last year. So uh, special thanks to the plenary speakers um, that helped us uh, keep the excitement and, and to bring some, some special features to the, to the meeting. To special thanks to the session chairs, of which there were many. Uh, poster authors that brought their work um, uh, for discussion at the, at, the, uh, at the PCW. And to all the organizers for just giving uh, some opportunities to get together and, and have some um, moments to celebrate special things. And in this particular case, we had the opportunity to recognize Pat Eliason for uh, her tenure as the executive director for LSST Corporation. And there's just some fun images uh, that we that were taken that particular evening. And this is just a, a, a nice representation of the opportunity that we took to, to be in person and, and do some, some special things. Um, so it was a great week. Um, and um, it was a good, uh, productive week. And it was also, uh, it was, at the time, we also recognized that while we were there uh, doing that kind of work, there were also people making uh, direct progress in various other elements, particularly on the site. Uh, and so we did take the opportunity to, to look at some of those activities. And so really, uh, as a week in time, that was, um, that was a beautiful representation of the breadth of what's going on all across uh, the Rubin Enterprise. So with that, um, let me introduce Hernan Bustos, who is the acting head of mission for Aura in Chile. Offer up uh, and give him a chance to say some words. Uh, well, thank you, Jaco and Victor. Uh, good morning to colleagues in the north and uh, good afternoon to uh, colleagues in Chile. Uh, it is a great pleasure and honor to participate in this ceremony where we recognize, celebrate, and congratulate a select group of our esteemed colleagues and their hugely important contributions to the uh, success of the Rubin construction and development. Today, uh, we make a pause to reflect on the challenging work that has been done in the construction of Rubin. And it is at this moment that we can see back in time the demanding hardships and difficulties of the hard conditions that you have experienced. After more than two years of uh, sanitary restrictions and complex measures to deal with the, the, with the uh, COVID pandemic. And of course, lately with the, uh, an unusual storm, uh, snowstorm. Uh, these situations have made work conditions inordinately more difficult than they used to be in the old normal, and it has made it harder to meet critical schedules and work plans. However, you have continued forward with untiring strength and resilience, readily available to solve all of these challenges that you have enc encountered throughout these seasons of despair and constraint. 
I want to congratulate you for your commitment and perseverance, and because of your great effort, today we can see the Rubin Dome shining atop Terro Bachon. The Ora team in Chile applauds your commitment and resolve to overcome all constraints in the path to meet the objectives of the construction program, and we are especially proud to collaborate for the success of your endeavors. We would like to encourage you to continue to persevere, and even in the face of any future ch challenges that you may confront on your unstoppable progress to the successful completion of the Rubin, pro the, of the Rubin project, as always with a passion for excellence and an exemplary commitment to work beyond the call of duty. Rubin is a fascinating project and you have all done an awesome job. Thank you. Thank you, Hernan, and uh, thank you for your support and for the help of your entire team. Uh, you all play a really vital role in in our success in Chile, and and I personally very much appreciate all that uh, all that effort. So uh, now let me introduce Brolio Concino Vera, who is an electronics engineer with Noir Lab and has uh, recently taken up the role of the president of the Aura Union in Chile. I'll uh, cede the floor to uh, Brulio for a moment. As you know, I'm, I'm going to present a little words for you. The next slide, please. Okay, um, to begin, I would like to thank Aura and the Rubin Observatory on behalf of the Workers Union for allowing us to participate in this award ceremony. Um, as we know, the world is still going through difficult times. More than two years of pandemic, armed conflicts and an economic recession have not given a respite to a society that has struggled to recover its normality. In the coming days, our country will have to make an important decision that will define, define its future for the years to come. In particular, for our organization, this year has also been important. We have started to the, with the general return to the face-to-face -face and meet again with co-workers that we have not seen for years. The Aura Workers Union is the largest astronomical observatory union in the country, in Chile. Throughout the history of our organization, our more than 200 partners have allowed us to achieve great agreements that have allowed us to maintain scientific leadership in our country. This year, once again, we successfully complete the collective, collective bargaining process. This new collective contract will allow both the workers and Aura to renew their commitment to excellence and good work environment. Um, as an electronic engineer dedicated to autom automation and astronomical, astronomical detectors, I, ha I have always been amazed at the innovation that Rubin projects represent for the scientific, scientific community. Ambitious control specifications added to the 3.2 gigapixel camera, the largest in the world, will allow mapping the skies of the southern hemisphere in an unprecedented way in the history of astronomy. Despite the difficult times we're going through worldwide, the workers of our and especially the workers of Rubin Project have demonstrated at all times their commitment with excellence and have been able to stand out in their respective jobs or positions. As a union, we have witnessed this dedication and additional effort, which invites us to celebrate and recognize the achievement of our workers who stand above expectation. Finally, I want to thank our and Rubin Observatory again for this invitation and we look forward to start the of operation of the project, of the Rubin project. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Julio, and um, congratulations. I extend my congratulations and my thanks for taking on this extra work as the, the, the president of the union. Good luck to you. Look forward to working with you. All right. So, um, Every year, Aura offers up each of its center the opportunity to recognize some of the outstanding service um, in several categories, uh, one for science, uh, outstanding service, 
diversity, equity, inclusion, technology, and innovation, and there's a team award. And so, uh, as you heard from Jelko, this is uh, sometimes a, or almost always a difficult task to, to, to isolate it down to just those five. Um, and, but we also take this opportunity and uh, really happy to be able to recognize these, uh, these four individuals and this team. You already heard from Jelko um, for the Science Award. Um, and so I will go past that one. Uh, our congratulations to Leanne uh, for that extra work that she's been doing uh, to enable science and to engage with the science community uh, in very specific and productive ways ahead of the LSST survey. And now let me um, introduce Jeff Barr, who I believe is on and offer up the floor to have him uh, recognize Freddie. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if Freddie's on or not, but uh, he's very deserving of this service award. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep, I hear you fine. Okay. Uh, good, yeah, uh, he's an amazing engineer and a huge contributor to our project and has been for more than five years. And uh, the um, award citation actually uh, mentions a couple of things that seem like ancient history now. <laughs> The assembly of the mount using some huge cranes that uh, Freddie arranged for and orchestrated <laughs> really well. And then the uh, also the um, uh, design and, um, and in implementation of all the oil lines for the hydrostatic bearing system of the telescope, which Freddie masterminded incredibly well for us. That's what's mentioned in the award. And then I want to bring up something that happened just yesterday uh, because his contributions are are, are always there. He's always uh, dedicated to the task and doing whatever's necessary to make things happen. And yesterday, we just installed ComCam on the, on the TMA. And that is a milestone that is on everybody's list uh, as a, a super important thing for us to have accomplished. And it would not have been possible without Freddie, I don't think. Because that's always, a, it sounds a little hyperbolic to say that about anybody. But in this particular case, there were at least three things that he did to make that happen. And um, one of them was um, getting the lifting fixture that picked up a uh, ComCam uh, operable again. It had a problem and Freddie came up with a solution that worked, made it safe, made it possible to do that. And it was practically uh, him and, um, and, and a few other people that contributed to that solution, but it was, was amazing and right on, the, right on the spot. Another thing was that the uh, guide system that we thought was going to um, uh, uh, carefully aligned the, the ComCam as it went into the TMA. Uh, um, we, we tried something out last November and it didn't work very well. It was big, long poles that had to go through holes. And Freddie redesigned that system and came up with something simpler and better and it worked. And uh, amazingly well for both the uh, camera uh, dummy demonstration plus ComCam installation yesterday. And we're pretty confident it's going to work when we get ready to install the LSSD cam. And Freddie was the chief cook and bottle washer for that project too. And then uh, after the storms, um, another system that everybody knows on the mountain that Freddie is open, intimately familiar with is the flow lift. And the flow lift shaft had filled with water and flooded mechanisms and done some damage. And if without that lift, we couldn't have moved ComCam up to the telescope to install it. And uh, Freddie as the lead person on that system as well also took charge of that and made sure that that uh, mitigation campaign with good capable help from other uh, people on the mountain, um, that it worked. Uh, and so that's just one example of the kinds of things that Freddie does for us every day. Uh, one of the most dedicated and capable engineers I've ever worked with. And so he's extremely uh, deserving of this award. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, and uh, congratulations to Freddie, and I very much appreciate uh, all of the efforts that he puts into the Rubin Observatory. So now let me um, introduce Sandrine Thomas, uh, our deputy director and uh, one of the deputy directors for the observatory and the project scientist for Telescope and Sight. Has some comments to make about Giovanni. Sure. And I chose my spot to be under the microphone, so hopefully you all hear me. Um, but it is a pleasure for me to uh, award the uh, the award, the EDI award to Giovanni, because he's he's really shown a lot of caring of people that goes really beyond any safety uh, responsibilities that he has as a safety uh, 
safety, health, and environment manager. And really, we've seen that in the last two years uh, with COVID and the increasing amount of stress that is happening on the summit. And he's been always there, really focused on the team well-being, and he's really um, showed a lot of empathy and understanding in all situations, from COVID cases to accidents to um, really um, safety on activities like uh, Jeff was mentioning about things like concave installation. So he's been really there uh, to focus on, on everyone. And so he's, re he's really showed a desire to really reach the workplace culture based on respect and inclusion that we are really trying to, to put together. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to mention and one other thing that we uh, show, one of, another reason why we chose Giovanni was because he really shows a lot of interest in learning, in learning about how to increase diversity and inclusion, how to make the workplace more welcoming to anyone. And his desire to learn and attend to a lot of sessions at the PCW, for, for instance, uh, really showed that. Um, and of course, we all enjoy his sense of humor, which is uh, a good way to, you know, decrease the stress um, sometimes. So thank you very, very much, Giovanni. Thank you, Sandrine, and congratulations, Giovanni. I appreciate uh, especially the sense of humor, even when the pirates lose. <laughs> Okay, um, Austin Roberts, um, floor is yours. All right, yeah, it's uh, my honor to award Kevin Ceruno uh, the Technology and Innovation Award. Uh, so Kevin actually started working with Ruben while he was still in college, getting his undergraduate at the U of A. Um, he's, after he graduated, uh, we brought him on full time and he's been supporting us ever since. Uh, he has also, uh, recently started his masters at the U of A. Um, and so he has been very instrumental, uh, both while he was working as an assistant while going to college and now at implementing and populating and improving our verification system which uh, for those of you who don't know it's a it's a totally new digital system kind of a, a first of its kind if you will um, and he also has supported one of the first major subsystem integrations down on the summit which was when we had the camera rotator and the camera cable wrap uh, operating synchronously at the uh, for the first time uh, he supported that uh, event and has really just shown uh, an ability to work above his years as a systems engineer so he's taken on some very challenging roles uh, as a very young engineer and so i'm it, it it's really nice to be able to recognize him uh, for working as well as he has uh, for Ruben. Thanks. Thanks, Austin, and thanks, Kevin, and congratulations. Um, let's see. I would like to uh, introduce Will and has some comments to make about our nomination for the team award. Yeah, hi, and uh, greetings from sunny Manchester uh, in England. I'm actually on leave, but I'm taking a break to present this award to the, uh, the Butler team. Um, so just uh, so we understand, I guess, the, the, uh, the abstraction of the data from Ruben algorithms is something very important for us within data management. Um, the code never accesses the files. It's always delivered the data of Python, Python objects directly into the algorithms. And the new integration or the new middleware also allows for advanced pipeline construction algorithms that allow very large graphs to be created so that we can use it for the big data processing that we need to do over the, the future. Um, and like much of the DM software, the Butler, of course, has been iterated over several times. 
that this team has been, you know, different sets of people over a long period. Uh, and this particular award is for generation three of the Butler. Um, and I think that, you know, that started in 2018 uh, with Fritz and a few people. Uh, Tim took over in 2020 and he's bought it home pretty much in 2021. Um, and it's really uh, finished in the last few weeks. We got it getting rid of all of the Gen 2 code out of the system, which is excellent. Um, so this is a, you know, a critical task, I think, for keeping the data management software running and data management software underpins everything that comes out of the observatory. So that's quite important. And especially it was important for running things at scale on the, uh, the interim data facility on Google. So the small team working over a long period of time to improve the cost base um, and, you know, the management prioritization of that work, very difficult. So I think we owe a lot to Tim. Jenis and his team, and I know Andy's on at least, I think some of the others are, are in the Calapalooza with Leanne and not here. Um, I think one of the, the endorsements of this is the fact that SphereX from NASA have now picked up this uh, code base uh, Butler Gen 3, and they use it. They don't use the rest of our pipelines, but they're using that part of it because they like the way that it abstracts the code from the data. So uh, I would just like to congratulate the team. It's Tim Jenis, Fritz Muller, Andy Selnikov, Jim Bosch, Michelle Gower, Nate Lust, and Mikhail Mikhailovich Kowalczyk. Um, and at the moment, and during that time, we also had Pim Schellert and Nate Pease working on this, who both left the project at this point in time, such a long period. So uh, that, that's it. Thank them all very much. I know Tim is in the room there. I'm sorry, I'm not in Tucson, but uh, congratulations, everybody. Great, thanks, Will. And uh, yeah, congratulations and thanks to Tim, Fritz, and the entire team for all of that work. So let's, at this point, uh, let me just uh, take one more moment and, um, and I'd invite everybody to join me in congratulating all of our awardees uh, for their service. Um, and I think they were all really well deserved, uh, but they're all also great representatives of our entire team and of all the work that's been going on. And so I really um, congratulate them again and appreciate their service, their excellence, and uh, for all the work they're doing to make Ruben a success. Okay, at this point, um, we also take an opportunity to recognize anybody that, has, that, that reaches sort of a five-year anniversary in their uh, life with Aura. And so um, for, over the next few slides, we'll recognize some five, 10, 20, and 25-year um, milestones with several people that have I've started, um, have been working with Aura for those lengths of time. And it's uh, also a little bit, um, I mean, we'll go through it. I think this hybrid uh, approach is uh, inclusive. Um, anybody can be there, it can, it can be participating, but this whole thing, it would have been just a whole lot nicer if we could have done a little bit more like Jelko and, and Leanne, um, had some more in-person uh, opportunities to be with each other and congratulate people more directly. but. Uh, any case, uh, we'll move on and uh, recognize those people in our Aura team that have been with us for five years. Um, here's some images of all of them and recognize Andy Clements, uh, Rampal Gill, Artis Harold, Simon Krugoff, Kristen Metzger, Will O'Malan, David Rathfelder, Diago Ribeiro de Souza. Brian Stalder, Adam Thornton, and Amy Wiest. Of course, Amy has since moved over to Aura uh, Cass, but um, she spent uh, her five her her five most productive years with us. We congratulate her on her new her new uh, her new adventure. I don't even know if Amy's with us at this moment, but we really do have have appreciated uh, her efforts. So congratulations to all of you for that five years. And I will now mention our one 10 year person. So uh, I'm sure Frosty is maybe at this moment feeling uh, like it's been a really fast 10 years and probably a really slow 10 years. I'm not quite sure how it is today, but I certainly congrat congratulate uh, Frosty for her 10 years uh, with Aura. Um, and for all of the productivity that you've put to or to to Ruben, and ah, look, you're there, and congratulations for sticking it out.
And then we jump to 20 years um, and to recognize Chuck Gessner, who um, I've had the pleasure of working with for many of those 20 years. Um, and as you know, um, Chuck has been our uh, head of safety uh, pretty much since the inception of Ruben um, and certainly the, the construction parts of Ruben. And it's been a pleasure having him uh, be part of the team. Uh, he got to his 20 years and said, okay, now he wants to retire. And so at this point he reached 20, gets our congratulations uh, to be able to retire, but also has a support contract with us. And so um, he's, um, he's conducting retirement, um, maybe not in the way he had originally intended, but we appreciate that he's continuing to support uh, support us as we move forward. But for now, congratulations, Chuck, for having been with Aura for uh, for the 20 years. And then we even have three people that have made it to 25. Um, I mentioned Pat Eliason earlier, uh, before Pat was the LSST executive director, she was with NSO and um, pro provided Aura with lots of support um, on, in that center. And so we wanna congratulate uh, Pat for those 25 years. Uh, Bob Blum has been with, uh, started with NOAO um, and is um, has spent the last couple of years really focusing on uh, Ruben Operations and is of course the Ruben Operations Director. Uh, and so we congratulate him for his 25 years with Aura. And then finally, uh, John Andrew, who has been a steadfast uh, designer for us for so many years uh, on Ruben and with Aura for that for the full length of time and helping with uh, lots of instrument design and development. And uh, also want to extend my thanks and congratulations to John for uh, all of that support uh, to all of Aura's uh, many projects and ours in particular. Um, over those 25 years. So at this moment, let me uh, pause and thank you all and congratulate you all for your 25 years. All right, so with that, um, this is an opportunity to thank everybody on the team. Thank you all for participating. I know it's not quite as exciting as if we could all be in person for these recognitions. Um, but there's a lot of hard work uh, that's going on. And uh, once again, wanna thank you all for doing that, uh, for putting in that time and that dedication. It's all paying off and we can see it every day um, on many fronts, both uh, physically on the summit, but also in all these data challenges and all these data uh, surveys and so forth. Um, and so I really wanna thank everybody uh, for sticking with it and for um, making the progress that we have been. And then also uh, just thanks to all of the Aura staff, uh, CAS, HR, um, the Aura leadership, as, as well as our team directly, uh, because it's everybody working together that's gonna make us uh, successful. And so uh, once again, my thanks to everybody. With that, uh, we have time to take on other questions if there are some, some discussion, um, but, uh, and I, I can stay on for, for longer, but I did want to uh, at least thank everybody for participating, particularly on the summit. I know that it uh, wasn't a great time uh, conflicting with some uh, lunch periods, uh, but for all of you that were recipients, congratulations again. For all of you that have participated today, thanks. And with that, I will stop sharing and um, check in and see if there's anything specific in chat that uh, we can address or anybody wants to discuss. Thanks, Victor. I just wanted to say, uh, uh, you know, for me, it just looks like, you know, everything is, is, is happening now and it's just gonna keep rolling in, in a positive way. We have a real system in Chile now with a camera on a telescope and I don't think you can understate how huge that is. Yeah. And, and 
it's just we're never going back. We're, we're going to be operating the full thing pretty soon. It's just great. This team has done just unbelievable work. Thanks, Bob. We just need mirrors. They're there. Um, it's going to happen. It is going to happen. I need more than just a few mirrors, but it'll all happen. It's happening. Uh, thanks, Pat, for joining. I didn't know we were there. This is uh, the party. oh, absolutely. There's not no crashing in the boat. Glad you could join. I don't know how much you heard, but uh, this is a team that's going to be uh, coming over to Noir Lab uh, for Ruben operation in the next couple of years, and they are well deserving. Yep, it's a great team, and I'm impressed with the years of service. It's a, a very well seasoned and tight knit team. Indeed. Hi, Victor. It's Nicole. I just wanted to let you know that uh, the Rubin Summit team was able to connect from the casino. They just left because they have to go back to the offices, but they were able to listen in. So they heard the ceremony. Excellent. And thanks, Nicole, for uh, supporting them in translating um, and for being as as flexible and dynamic as you are and getting all that done for them. No problem. And for, and, and for me uh, every week, so appreciate it. Sure. Pat, I saw your hand go up. Did you have to? Did you want to say something? Welcome to. Do you have to come off mute? Oh, there we go. Yeah, we can there we go. You. Okay, I just want to say hello to everybody, and um, I want to thank thank everybody in um, it's related to the Ruben Analysis T project, and um, for this great opportunity, I I did work for Aura for a long, long time. I'm working for. Um, NSO, I started in Gong, went to the um, ATST, which is now the Inouye um, Solar Telescope, and then I helped move um, NSO from Tucson to Boulder, Colorado. And then I um, jumped across the street and went and joined the LSST Corporation. It's been a real honor and a real joy um, to get to know so many people. Um, in this project and in Aura across the board, but um, special thanks to everybody, and um, I really appreciate being included in in this ceremony. Thanks so much. Yeah. This is the part of the meeting that would be a lot more fun if we were actually in the same time. Well, some of us are. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I couldn't get down there. I am in Tucson, obviously, from my standard background. Yeah. Anyway, we don't have to belabor this. So again, thanks everybody for joining. Um, I don't. There's a lot in the chat. I assume somebody would have mentioned if there is something to. Look at specifically. It's all okay. Nothing new in the chat that I've been picking up on, other than congratulations being sent out by various people. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks everybody. I, again, I will stay on for a few more minutes uh, and just actually walk through the chat just to read it for myself. But happy to chat with anybody else afterwards. But uh, I think we can call it 
of the day for the actual meeting itself. Thanks, Victor.